President Obama came into office saying that he would, uh, you know, obviously work very hard on bringing diversity to the media. He said that he would have a strong stance on net neutrality. That's a very progressive position. He had opposition to media consolidation. We'll see how that turned out. And expand uh, broadband access. Now he's done very little to expand broadband access since then. Um, and let's go to the issue of diversity in the media. Uh, how did he do there? Well, uh, Free Press had a filing on that that gives you a sense of how things have gone. Based on the information they had from 2006, obviously President Obama came in in 2009, uh, to 2011. So this is a little bit in Bush administration and a little bit in Obama's administration. But as you can see, during the Obama years there was no turnaround. Let me give you the exact quote here. There has been nearly a 20% decline in the level of minority ownership since 2006 and a net loss of six minority owned stations since the commission last collected data in October of 2011. Hmm, that doesn't sound very good. Doesn't seem like there was much of an effort made to diversify media. Now when it comes to commercial television stations, well the record is actually much worse. Same filing, in a nation where African Americans comprise 13% of the population, there are only five African American owned full power commercial TV stations, just 0.4% of the total. This is a 76% decline in just six years. So great to have a progressive president in there that says, knows the value of diversity in the media so that you can get other unrepresentative voices uh, into the media so that they can have better representation and that our democracy can flourish with those extra voices and not just the voices of the mega corporations drowning out everyone else, right? Not wrong. President Obama, by his actions, and you shall know him by his works, seems to not give a damn about minority ownership or diversity in the media. Now, how about conglomeration? Though? I mean, he was against it in 2008, and he had people on his side as opposed to Hillary Clinton, because she seemed to be more in line with the telecom industry, but he was for change. And look, there's a perfect opportunity here, because Rupert Murdoch wants to gobble up the LA Times and the Chicago uh, Tribune. Those are major papers, and it would violate the existing laws on how much uh, power you can have within the media and how much of the media you can control in certain uh, cities, right? So easy, and Murdoch runs Fox News Channel, uh, which is opposed to President Obama uh, 24 hours of the day, seven days a week. No brainer. All you got to do is enforce the laws that are already in place. Well, Matt Soler, who is a fellow at the Roosevelt Institute, reports, quote, earlier this year, Obama Federal Communications Commission Chairman Julius Ganikowski proposed relaxing media ownership rules to allow Rupert Murdoch to buy the Los Angeles Times and the Chicago Tribune. Oops. See, this is the amazing thing about Obama. Why? Why do you help a guy who appears to be your arch nemesis? The guy who is conglomerating media in a way that not only hurts the whole country and hurts our actual practical right to free speech. Yes, I mean, you can go speak in your basement, but if you're not on TV, you're not online, etc., it's a little harder for people to hear you. And in fact, he lets the big media conglomerates use that as an excuse all the time, and the giant corporations to use that as an all, uh, excuse all the time. In, in, and it's not just President Obama, the whole government is rigged this way. For example, Verizon recently said that they have the right, their First Amendment right, to censor your emails. Why? Because the government can't interfere with how they exercise their freedom of speech. Obviously, the Supreme Court uh, ruled in Citizens United that because of freedom of speech issues, you could spend unlimited money and unlimited corporate money in politics. So money has all the First Amendment rights in the world, and that's not all, by the way. Fox News has right, claimed a right, a First Amendment right to be able to distort the news, and they have won here. They lost in Canada, but they won in the United States of America. These are amazing. This is what they've perverted the First Amendment to. Furthermore, uh, it, my personal favorite is the ratings agencies, they claim that they had a right to give the wrong ratings, to give bad ratings, because remember all the toxic mortgages, they gave the highest ratings to AAA. Why? They have a First Amendment right to lie to their customers. Well, isn't that lovely? When it comes to our First Amendment rights, I'm sorry, uh, all the media has been purchased. In practical effect, 
your voice will be diminished because I gave it all to Murdoch. Why did we elect a progressive president who was bashed by Fox News 24-7, then turns around and does the owner of Fox News a tremendous favor by breaking the rules on his behalf, saying, you know what, no, 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 we're likely to okay you buying these newspapers, and what do you gain out of it? Well, look, there's only two possible answers here, which is, number one, on policy issues, President Obama is by far the weakest president we've ever had. All you got to do is be a right winger and go boo. And you're like, okay, yeah, what do you need? You want me to break the law for you? Okay, I'll do it, I'll do it. And if you broke the law, I won't look backwards, I'll only look forwards. I'll do anything you ask me to do, right? But that's not the answer. Because a guy that week would have gotten crushed in the last election. But he came out like a lion in this last election. And he beat Mitt Romney with a stick when it came to his own self-interest. He was actually very strong. So it's not just that he's weak by nature, it's that the system is set up in a way where money always wins. And it doesn't matter if you have a Democratic president or a Republican president, it doesn't matter that it appears on the surface that Fox News and, and Barack Obama are constantly at war with each other. The reality is they help one another all the time to get more and more money. Power and money rules Washington. Now, I don't see Fox News, to be fair, helping Obama a lot, okay? That doesn't appear to be the case of the naked eye. But Obama is elected by the same moneyed interests that are in favor of Fox News, that are in favor of their ultimate goal for both sides, which is right-wing policy. Not necessarily political victories for the Republican Party, but policy victories. That's why after President Obama is elected, he starts talking about how he might cut Social Security and Medicare. And that, in fact, he will not raise taxes on everyone making about $250,000. What could he do? He had to do a deal with the Republicans. No, he had to do a deal where people that already have power and money get more power and money. And that is what dictates all of the decisions. Not just the grand bargain, not just the environment, Environmental Protection Agency, not just the rules regarding Wall Street, but even the rules in, in the media where the guys who appear to be warring, in fact, all benefit when President Obama does Fox News this enormous favor. That's how this game is rigged, man. If, the, if there was any reality to the fighting that you see, Democrats and Republicans, that the establishment media loves to hype up, if there was any reality at all, this would be the easiest no of all time. Oh, you'd like to buy the Los Angeles Times and Chicago Tribune. Hey, everybody, did you hear Rupert would like to buy the Los Angeles Times? Oh, it's illegal right now, but you'd like me to change the law so that it's not illegal. Oh, that's a good one, Rupert. Get the fuck out of here. That's how it would go down.